skill in any field is the result of proper execution to meet the challenge you are confronted with. As a forklift operator, you are constantly challenged by adverse surface conditions, tight working areas, and time constraints. Your skill as an operator depends on how you safely meet these challenges. In this program, we will discuss basic forklift driving skills, including hazardous driving conditions, proper handling of a load, and proper parking procedures. There are two major differences between how a forklift operates and what you are used to in your car. Your car has a four-point suspension system with a low center of gravity. The forklift has a three-point system, which includes the front two wheels and a pivot pin located in the center of the rear axle. The combined weight of the lift truck and its load must be kept within this stability triangle so the lift truck won't tip. The second difference is the wheels on the forklift that turn are usually mounted on the rear axle. As a result, the rear end tends to swing out in the opposite direction when the forklift turns a corner. These two factors can make the forklift more challenging to control in certain conditions. When driving in hazardous conditions, the forklift operator must take extra precautions. On an incline, always travel straight up and straight down. When you are carrying a load, always travel with the load pointing uphill. Reduce your speed when approaching an incline. Raise your forks high enough so they don't hit the surface. Avoid making any turns on the incline. Wait until your forklift is completely on a level surface. Holes, rough surfaces, loose gravel, speed bumps, and other obstacles should be avoided whenever possible. When they are unavoidable, slow down and try to maintain an easy, smooth pace. Approach the railroad track at an angle so that you travel over the obstacle one wheel at a time. Raise the forks just high enough to clear the obstacle, but keeping your load as stable as possible. Wet and oily spots should be cleaned up immediately to prevent accidents. Wet surfaces and oily spots can make stops and turns very hazardous. If weather conditions make wet surfaces unavoidable, slow down to a speed which you can maintain control of your vehicle. Allow extra room for stopping. When driving from a rain-soaked outdoor lot into a dry building, don't rush to get in from the rain. Maintain your controlled speed. Remember, your brakes and tires will still be wet when you get inside. When lifting a load to transfer it from one point to the other, the stability and safety of that load is your responsibility. This includes knowing the load capacity of the machine you are working with and if the content of that load presents any additional hazards. Once you are sure your forklift can properly handle the load, follow these procedures. Slowly line your forklift squarely in front of the pallet you intend to lift. Brake the vehicle and adjust the forks so they are level. Just high enough and as far apart as possible to enter the pallet. Slowly inch forward until the forks are in the pallet as far as possible. Slowly tilt the forks back and raise the load just high enough to clear the area. Once you have cleared the area, stop and lower the load to 6 to 10 inches off the ground and carefully proceed to your destination. If the load blocks your visibility, travel in reverse, looking over your shoulder. Never drive with the load in the raised position or with your head outside of the operator's compartment to improve your visibility. When setting the load, line the pallet squarely with its intended location. It is a good rule to allow two to three inches of clearance at the sides and back of each load. Once you have squared up the pallet, stop the lift truck. Raise the pallet to the proper height, about two inches above the surface. Slowly inch forward until it is in place. Remember, the higher you raise the load, the more you lower the weight capacity. Lower the pallet in place. Level the forks. Sound the horn and slowly back out. Once the forks are clear of any obstruction, stop the lift truck and lower the forks to about six inches off the ground and proceed to your next load. When you park your forklift and leave it unattended, park it off to the side, out of the way of normal traffic flow. Do not block aisles, doorways, or emergency exits. Set the parking brake. Lower the forks or load to the ground. Place the controls in the neutral position and turn off the engine. Never leave your vehicle in a position like this one. At the end of your shift, park your forklift in its properly designated space. Your skill as an operator is based on your ability to properly maneuver and control the forklift. 
Use proper techniques and proceed with caution when confronted with hazardous surface conditions. Know the proper ways to handle and transport your load. Proper execution of the forklift is essential to safely perform your task. Don't take shortcuts. The safety of yourself and your co-workers is in your hands. A professional in any industry takes great pride in his craft. His performance is based on the ability to control and master the tools he works with. As a forklift operator, being in control at all times is essential. In this program, we will address two key points that need to be understood in order to control the forklift. The three-point suspension system of the forklift and load capacity. Unlike your car, which has a four-point suspension system and a low center of gravity, your forklift operates on a three-point system and has a high center of gravity because of the counterweight in the back. The three points of suspension are the two wheels on the front axle and a pivot pin located in the center of the rear axle. If we connect the three points of suspension, we form what is referred to as the stability triangle. As long as the combined center of weight of the lift truck and its load is within the triangle, the truck will not tip. Sudden or erratic changes in speed or direction can produce forces which may shift the center of weight outside the triangle. When this occurs, the chances of tipping the forklift dramatically increase. On an empty forklift, the center of weight is centered towards the back side of the triangle. As weight is added to the forks, the center of weight moves forward. When the load exceeds the lift truck capacity, the center of weight moves outside the triangle. Once again, this dramatically increases the odds of tipping the forklift and risking injury both to yourself and your co-workers. Therefore, it is important to know the second key principle in safe forklift operation, load capacity. The load capacity of your lift truck is the maximum amount of weight on an established load center that the vehicle can safely lift of a perfectly balanced load. It is calculated to maintain the center of weight within the stability triangle at maximum capacity under normal operating conditions. The load capacity of the truck you operate can be found in two locations, on the manufacturer's data plate and on the side of the vehicle. As a professional operator, it is important never to exceed the load capacity of your vehicle. It will decrease the stability of your forklift and increase the possibility of costly damage to the equipment. For example, if the load capacity of your vehicle is 4,000 pounds and the established load center is 24 inches from the heel of the forks, the maximum you can lift is 4,000 pounds evenly balanced on a 48-inch pallet. You may lift loads on pallets longer than 40 inches, but as you do so, the weight capacity decreases proportionately. The closer the weight is balanced toward the established load center, the more weight you can lift, up to but never exceeding the load capacity. Forklifts are able to lift large amounts of weight because of the counterweight located in the back of the vehicle. This graphic illustration demonstrates in simple terms how this is accomplished. The balance point or fulcrum of the forklift is the front axle or center point of the scale in our example. When weight is added to the left side of the scale or the forks of the lift truck, the other side raises up. To counter this, a weight is added to the right side of the scale or the back of the forklift to balance it. As the weight on the left side of the scale or the forks of the lift truck is moved further from the fulcrum point, the amount of weight has to be reduced to balance the two. The same principle holds true when the weight is lifted high into the air. The higher the weight is lifted, further from the fulcrum point or front axle, the less capacity and stability of the forklift. This is one reason you should never drive with your load raised. The stability of your lift truck is reduced. If you are lifting a load that causes your back wheels to lift off the ground, stop. Either lighten the load you are attempting to lift or use a forklift with the load capacity capable of handling the job. Never add weight to the counterweight or have a co-worker stand on the back of your truck to counter the load. In this program, we have discussed two key points in understanding the forklift. The three-point suspension system or stability triangle and the principles involved in load capacity. Your forklift is a valuable tool. Understand how it works and put that knowledge to use. Concentrate on what you are doing at all times. Be a skilled professional. Be in control.
forklifts are some of the most valuable pieces of equipment at your facility. As an operator, it is essential that you have a good working knowledge of the forklift. You must also make sure the equipment is in good working order whenever it is to be used. Faulty equipment can cause injury to yourself or your co-workers and do permanent damage to the equipment. In this program, we will discuss the features found on the forklift and the pre-operation inspection required before use. There are a large variety of styles, sizes, and makes of forklifts. They are classified by their source of energy, such as electrical, gas, diesel, or liquid propane. There are high lows, order pickers, platform lifts, and more. Though there are many different models, each have similar features, requirements, and operating principles. All lift trucks, with the exception of motorized hand trucks, must be equipped with a horn to warn others of approach, overhead guards to protect against falling objects, and a load backrest extension. Common features found on the dashboard in the operator's compartment include lift controls to raise, lower, or laterally move the load and tilt the mast, a direction control to move the forklift forward or backward when you push the accelerator, an ignition switch, much like the one you would find in your automobile. Gauges which indicate fuel level, oil pressure, and engine temperature. Some propane-powered lift trucks will have the fuel gauge on the side of the tank. The engine's total operating hours are registered on the hour meter, which is used to plan regularly scheduled maintenance. The parking brake is usually located on the left side of the dashboard. The parking brake should be engaged any time you leave your forklift. The three pedals moving left to right are the clutch or inching pedal, brake, and accelerator. Additional controls common to their specific designation would include diesel stops, chokes, on-off switches, and ammeters. Before you begin operation of your forklift at the start of your shift, you are required by law to conduct a pre-operation safety inspection. Not only is it the law, it is a good way to prevent unnecessary accidents due to faulty equipment. If more than one person operates the forklift, one of the operators should be designated the responsibility of conducting the inspection. Any defects that would prevent the safe operation of the forklift must be corrected before the vehicle can be put into service. Unless you are authorized and qualified to make repairs yourself, have the work performed by a trained certified specialist. The pre-operation safety inspection should be conducted with a written checklist. At the conclusion of the inspection, the checklist should be signed, dated, and filed in its appropriate location. The pre-operation safety inspection should begin with the manufacturer's data plate to make sure it is clean and readable. Check the forks for distortion or cracks. Check lift chains for equal tension, broken pins and wear. Check the overhead guard and backrest for loose bolts and cracks. Check the tilt cylinders for loose lock nuts. Check for loose hub nuts. Look under the forklift and on the floor for any signs of oil, coolant, or fuel leaks. Check the levels in the brake fluid reservoir, the engine oil pan, hydraulic tank, and the coolant level in the radiator. Check the rubber on the tires for cracks and other signs of wear and tear. If the tires are inflatable, make sure the air pressure meets the manufacturer's specifications. Start the forklift engine and check all gauges on the dashboard for proper readings. Check the parking brake to make sure it is working. Be sure the steering wheel free play is correct. The horn works. The mast and forks move smoothly. Check the clutch to make sure it engages properly. And finally, check the brake. Hold it down with your foot for 10 seconds. There should be no noticeable drift with the pressure. Log the hours displayed on the meter, sign and date the inspection checklist, and file it with your supervisor or in its properly designated space. Any forklift that needs repair work must be tagged and removed from service until the repair work has been completed by a certified mechanic. Don't take any chances by driving a forklift that needs repairs. It could affect the safety of yourself or the people you work with. You are entrusted with a valuable piece of equipment. Take pride in its condition and your ability to do a professional job.
It takes a true professional to operate a forklift. A professional in both skill and attitude. Your company and co-workers depend on you to use proper operating techniques and observe all safety procedures. In this program, we will discuss the importance of being a safety-conscious driver, the three main trouble areas where accidents occur, and how to prevent these accidents. It is estimated that over 35,000 injuries a year are forklift-related. The number one area of concern is pedestrian traffic. In one study by the California Department on Industrial Relations, 31% of the accidents reported were pedestrians struck by a forklift truck. Anytime moving equipment is combined with pedestrian traffic, there is potential trouble. Combine that with narrow aisles, doorways, and blind corners, and you have a combination that requires the utmost caution. Common sense, alertness, and using the proper procedures can prevent most of these accidents. Whenever you approach intersections, corners, or other blind spots, such as overhead doorways, slow down, sound your horn to warn others, and proceed with caution. Extra caution may be needed when driving from outdoors to indoors on bright, sunny days. Your eyes may need time to adjust to the change in lighting. Sound your horn when approaching a blind spot. You should also sound your horn whenever you begin to back up or approach people standing or walking in the path you are traveling. When approaching a corner, slow down, sound your horn to warn anyone in the area. Remaining on the right-hand side of the aisle, pull the forklift far enough into the intersection to allow the rear end of the forklift enough room to swing out without hitting the shelves on the left. It is important to watch both the swing out of the rear end and the forks or load on the front end. The most common cause of pedestrian accidents is a forklift driver going too fast. Under ideal conditions, it takes the average forklift going 10 miles per hour, 22 feet to come to a complete stop. Think about this the next time you rush to get the job done. Is it worth the possibility of injuring a coworker or yourself? A professional drives defensively and expects the unexpected. Keep your mind on your driving and be alert for changing conditions. Obey all posted speed limits and operate only as fast as conditions safely permit. Plan your route ahead. Make sure your route of travel is clear and your load will fit through all doorways and overhead clearances. Expect the unexpected. Accidents happen when the forklift operator becomes inattentive and develops bad habits. Some forklift operators like to take shortcuts once they gain more experience. Years of experience doesn't mean you can let down your guard. One bad habit to avoid is raising and lowering your load while on the move. Traveling with a raised load can affect the stability of your vehicle, causing it to tip. A raised load can also block your visibility. If the load blocks your visibility, travel in reverse, looking over your shoulder. Never drive with the load in the raised position or with your head outside of the operator's compartment to improve your visibility. You should never attempt to adjust the load while on your forklift or stick your hands through the mast. Do not place any loads within eight feet of the center of any railroad tracks or where they will block any emergency fire exits. Some of the worst accidents occur in the loading dock area. Additional safety precautions are necessary when loading and unloading public carriers such as truck trailers and railroad cars. Before entering a truck trailer or railroad car with your forklift, chalk the wheels to secure the vehicle. It is a good idea to post a sign so the chalks are not removed. Make sure any braking mechanisms are engaged and steel support jacks are in place. When unloading railroad cars, set the handbrake and place the proper derails and blue flags so the appropriate personnel will not move the car. Secure the dock board or steel bridge plate into position so it can't slip. And inspect the floor of the vehicle as well as the dock board for any damage and to make sure it can securely support the weight of both the lift truck and its load. Additional lighting may also be needed to provide clear visibility. When entering the railroad car or truck trailer, Drive straight up or straight down the dock plate. Don't accelerate on it. This could cause it to slip out of place. Other tragic and avoidable accidents are the result of horseplay. Giving a buddy a ride on the forks or hot dogging is asking for trouble. Driving a forklift is a serious responsibility. As a professional certified operator, you are responsible for your safety as well as that of your coworkers. Know the capabilities of your lift truck. Be a defensive driver. Obey all regulations. 
and plan ahead, but expect the unexpected. A safe driver is a professional driver. Walk behind forklifts are used for moving items short distances and working in tight areas that conventional forklift trucks are unable to reach. Both the busy environment walk behinds operate in and the task of moving large, sometimes bulky materials presents dangers if safe work practices are not followed. In this program, we will look at safe operating procedures for forklift walk behinds, including pre-operation inspection, an understanding of load capacity, and interacting with the work environment. Walk behinds, or motorized hand trucks, include a wide variety of vehicles that are designed for specific situations in the workplace. Although they vary in size, shape, and function, the principles for safe operation are the same. To prevent unnecessary injuries due to faulty equipment, all forklifts are required to have a pre-operation inspection at the beginning of every shift. Check that the forks are properly secured. Check the lift chains for equal tension, broken pins, and wear. Check the water level in the battery. Look for any leaks of oil and coolant. Check the tires for wear and tear, and clean the safety shield. Never operate a forklift that does not pass inspection. Tag it for repairs to be done by the proper personnel. After the pre-operation check is completed, check the manufacturer's data plate to find the load capacity of your vehicle. The load capacity is the maximum amount of weight on an established load center that the vehicle can safely lift a perfectly balanced load. The load center is the distance from the vertical faces of the forks to the center of the load being handled. The load capacity listed is for optimum conditions. There are many factors that will reduce the weight that can be lifted. As the load center shifts further out, the weight you can safely lift is reduced. As the height of the lift increases, the load capacity is also reduced. Most trucks have full weight capacity up to a certain height and are downrated above that height. This information is also found on the manufacturer's data plate. Before lifting the load, spread the forks as wide as the pallet allows. The forks should be inserted all the way into the pallet before lifting. This gives you a stable load and prevents damage to the pallet. Once the load is stable, and meets load capacity requirements, you can proceed with care. Never move any faster than your normal walking pace. Maintain a distance of at least three truck lengths from other vehicles. Avoid sudden stops and turns that will shift the weight of the load. Always travel with your load low to increase the stability of your truck. When pushing the walkie forward, stand directly behind it with both hands on the grips of the control handle. Remember, the truck pivots at the load wheels. Compensate for the swing of the power unit when turning corners. When pulling the walkie, stand off to the side ahead of the truck's power unit. Keep your feet clear of the truck frame at all times. The proper foot protection is required for all walk-behind operators. 22% of all forklift accidents involve the feet. If you have to travel up or down a ramp, always have the load pointed downward. Keep the wheels straight. Never turn on grades, ramps, or inclines. Remember that you're working in an environment that combines heavy equipment with pedestrians. Approach all intersections with caution. Honk your horn to warn others of your presence. Always yield to pedestrians. And remember the forklift to your right has the right of way. Don't pass other vehicles at intersections. Park your walkie only in a designated area. Lower the forks and remove the key from the ignition. Never let others operate your walkie unless they are authorized. And never give a coworker a ride on the forks. A walk behind forklift truck is an important tool for material handling. If handled improperly, they have the potential not only for property damage, but personal injury to yourself or a coworker. Perform a pre-operation inspection before use. Know the load capacity and the factors that affect it. Operate smoothly and proceed with caution. Ever since we were little children, we have been conditioned to stop, look, and listen before crossing the street.
times we forget to respect the fact that the dangers are just as great in our own work environment. The mixture of forklift traffic with pedestrians is dangerous if not handled properly. 31% of all forklift accidents involve pedestrians being hit or run over. These tragedies can be prevented if both the forklift operator and the pedestrians are alert at all times and follow established safe procedures. In this program, we will look at the responsibilities of both the pedestrian and the forklift operator in preventing accidents, including means of communicating each other's presence, following established traffic patterns, and the importance of being alert in the work environment. Traffic control at a plant is more challenging than our highways. The roads or passageways are not always clear-cut. There are more blind corners, and there are no sidewalks that separate pedestrians from moving vehicles. Posted signs, convex mirrors, and pedestrian lines are effective as long as they are utilized. But the safe and smooth flow of plant traffic comes down to an awareness for each other's presence and a concern for safety. This awareness is based on the ability to communicate. For the forklift operator, this is done with both visual and audible signs. When approaching corners, slow down and honk your horn. Check the convex mirrors in the corners they are placed at. Sound your horn when passing pedestrians from behind. Simply put, always make people aware of your presence. Never assume that they know you are there. As a pedestrian, you must follow normal traffic patterns in your facility. Walk at a normal pace and remain alert. Concentrate only on getting from point A to point B. By using the normal traffic patterns established at your facility, you will be more visible. Taking shortcuts may get you to your destination faster, but it also makes you more vulnerable. Popping out of blind spots where you are not supposed to be is a challenge for even the most alert forklift operators. When retrieving items needed at your workstation, never back into the aisle. Instead, face the aisleway and proceed when traffic is clear. If a guest enters the plant, forewarn him or her of forklift traffic and the rules of travel. Finish your conversations before proceeding through the plant. For all people traveling in a group, it is best to form a single file line and concentrate only on safely reaching your destination. Forklift operators have deadlines to meet. Respect their need for clear travel by holding your conversations for the proper designated area. A pedestrian should never assume that the forklift is going to yield to you, even if your facility dictates that they should. Wait until the forklift driver waves you on before proceeding. Forklift operators should only proceed when they are sure the pedestrian is safely out of the way. Remember, in tight areas, to watch the swing of the back end of the forklift. In a noisy work environment, a special effort must be made to both listen for a forklift's audible signals and watch for its visual warnings. Many forklifts come with a flashing light so that people are warned of their presence. As a pedestrian, you should be aware of these signs. Never walk behind stored pallets without letting others know of where you are. Good housekeeping plays a key role in safe pedestrian travel. Aisleways must remain clear, convex mirrors clean, and floors dry. Plant personnel should be on the lookout for anything that inhibits the safe flow of traffic and take steps to alleviate the problem. Many of you may have been involved in near-miss accidents. Instead of finding fault with the other party, think about steps you could take to solve the problem. Forklift accidents account for 10% of all on-the-job disabling injuries. Accidents have resulted in serious injuries, including amputations and even fatalities. The safe interaction of forklifts with pedestrians is a two-way street. For the forklift operator, it means communicating your presence and operating at safe speeds. For the pedestrian, it means being alert at all times and following safe traffic routes at your facility. Both parties need to respect the other's presence. Remember those fundamental lessons we learned as children. Stop, look, and listen. They are even more crucial in the workplace.